More than two weeks of testimony, 56 witnesses, hundreds of pieces of evidence. But only one man knows exactly what happened the night Trayvon Martin was killed. And Friday, in closing arguments, his lawyer called him a victim. You know, there was some anger and hostility and ill will and spite, maybe, that night. It just had nothing to do with George Zimmerman. Well, that's not true. It had something to do with George Zimmerman. He was the victim of it. Defense attorney Mark O'Mara implored the jury not to assume anything or make snap judgments and laid the burden of proof squarely at the feet of the prosecution. Give me a shred of evidence that contradicts that he had any other option. Sabrina Fulton couldn't take it, leaving the courtroom as pictures of her dead son played one last time for the jury. Six women, five of them mothers. Isn't that every child's worst nightmare? To be followed on the way home in the dark? And lawyers for the state of Florida tried to depict George Zimmerman as a man who had choices and made a deadly one. Trayvon Martin may not have the defendant's blood on his hands, but George Zimmerman will forever have Trayvon Martin's blood on his. Two lives forever changed. Your verdict is not gonna bring Trayvon Benjamin Martin back to life. Your verdict is not going to change the past, but it will forever define it. And as the nation is about to turn its attention away from this tiny community, one person is left to pick up the pieces. A guy lost his life. Another guy shot him. When you pull that trigger, no matter what's going on, your life has changed. Whether you go to jail or don't go to jail, your life is totally, totally different. Sanford Mayor Jeff Triplett says there's no going back. Still, he's preserved every moment of this tragedy. I mean, this is really like a little sliver of history. It's a scrapbook of a city turned upside down. Faded clippings of memories still fresh. Your son looks terrified there. He looks absolutely terrified as to what's happening. Stop in the chest. We want arrest. The innocence of the children watching all this and, and trying to trying to understand what's going on. Here in Sanford, being mayor is only a part-time job, but keeping the city safe amid nasty emails, anonymous phone calls, even death threats became a full-time occupation. It was a lot of pressure, and I don't care if you're the mayor of New York City or the mayor of Sanford, Florida. There's no way you can truly be prepared for it. Whereas Trayvon Martin lost his life, others lost their livelihoods. Police Chief Bill Lee, a 30-year veteran, was fired. He's a good man. For me, it wasn't what the investigation was. It was the handling afterwards, the, the chaos management, so to speak. He didn't take the candy. He took the life and left the child. Lee is shouted down during a press conference weeks after the shooting. He marches away as I try to talk to him. I understand your frustration, but I thought for the good of the community and particularly for the good of the Sanford Police Department, we needed to move forward. But Lee wasn't the only cop casualty. Once a star detective, lead homicide investigator Chris Serino was banished to the graveyard shift, night patrol. On day six of the trial, Serena was called by the prosecution, but ironically, ended up helping the defense, saying George Zimmerman was believable. His statement, what did that indicate to you? Either he was telling the truth, or he was a complete um, pathological liar, one of the two. Okay. And then there's the police department spokesman, David Morgenstern, silenced as well. Morgenstern, the PIO. Morgenstern's still sergeant on the police department but no longer the public information officer? No, he is right now uh, on workers' comp, so he's on light duty. Okay. But the public remains rattled, especially in the sleepy development where neighbors are still defending George Zimmerman. Matt, he had these. They may have fought, but he has just he the had same these, right Maddie. for self-defense as he George Zimmerman did. He had he? these, okay? You'll never convince Frank Taffy that George Zimmerman did anything wrong that night. 16 months ago, you'd never been on TV. Now you're on TV three times a day. Everybody has 15 minutes of fame. Mine's on a loop, Matt. <laughs>
But fame has had its price, especially for those who never asked for it. You have Jonathan Good that actually saw the fight. You have Jeremy and Jenna who made the 911 calls. You got the Manolos. You got Selma. You have uh, Celine. You have Serdica. All these people are casualties of this tragedy. Lives destroyed, careers ended, a city ripped apart by the greatest casualty of all, the death of 17-year-old Trayvon Martin. Jeff Triplett, the mayor, now more of a custodian, trying to piece a broken city back together. You apologize and you, you try to make things better, you know, that's all you can do is try to, you, you can't change the past. You cannot change it, but by God, you can walk through it and, and, and try to make it better. Such divisions on both sides of this case, and in fact, at this hour from the Sanford Police Department, one of the investigators for the police department saying it's very quiet. We have people patrolling right now. Nothing different than usual. Nothing out of the ordinary. Encouraging from Sanford, Florida.